Shalom, shalom, shalom. So I think this is number four. If, if I'm losing track, then I'll go back and try to edit this out. But anyway, Zion, the last time we were together, we talked about Noah and how he was commanded to do something in order to be saved from the judgment. Of course, it was Yah that brought the salvation because Yah's the one called Noah and told him what to do and how to do it to be saved. He told him how to do it. And therefore, you can see, and I'll just, I hate to use this term because people mess this term so bad, but therefore you can see the grace of Yah. You can see the wall of protection that Yah was putting around Noah, which was his instructions to Noah. And those instructions was how to build that boat, that ark, for the saving of his house. And of course, the saving of the world in that sense because of the animals and things that had to be carried through. All right, so I'm going to deal with one more point about Noah before we move off of that. And that is um, where I kind of left off in the last video, which is the particulars. There's a matter of salvation. And people ask that question all the time. And it is a very, it's a popular question, but it's kind of a stupid question. It's, a, it's kind of an asinine question. Um, when you understand deliverance. When you understand the word deliverance and being delivered, to start asking questions or dumb questions about what is necessary for deliverance when you're the one that need to be delivered, it is kind of stupid. And therefore, we get the picture here in Noah's case where Yah literally brings him in to a business meeting and was like, I want to talk to you about something. And he was like, all right, what is it? He said, I'm going to destroy the whole world, destroy the earth. And I'm going to do it in a way that I've never I've, I don't, I've never even done this before. So what is that? I'm going to call it the rain. And then Noah was like, what is rain? He's like, well, rain is water is going to come down from the sky. And Noah was like, I ain't never seen that. Why? Because in Noah's day, a mist came up. Almost like an automatic sprinkler system. It came up and watered the ground from the ground up. So he had never seen it, um, let alone it, enough water falling out of the sky to flood the known world at that time and most likely flooded the whole world. That's another story. I'm not getting to that right now. But this is the business meeting that Noah was brought into. And there are there are particulars. There's detail in what he's supposed to do. Details. And and just as important as obeying Yah in building the ark on the same level of importance is that you build the ark the way Yah told you to build it. It's on the same level of importance. Do you understand that? What is the point of you building the ark and you don't build it the way he tells you to build it? Because if you do that, I promise you, it's not going to survive the flood. Because you, you don't know this flood. You ain't been in this storm. 
You've never even seen rain fall from the sky. And you come talking about, I don't see why I gotta be so big. I mean, my little old family, we could, we could, we could make it, we could, we could do this in, in half the size and save some work. Cause that's the way most of us think. It don't take all that. I need you to make this, uh, here's y'all talking to Moses. Look, man, this thing gotta be three football fields long, at least. And he look at 300 feet, I mean, 300 yards time he like oh my how much wood is that well it's gonna take me a hundred years to build i tell you what let's just do this <clears throat> let's just build it a hundred and we'll see and many of you watching me you're going you know i see where more is going with this yes because you're doing that in your life yah is giving you instructions and because you think you know why he's giving you the instructions to do certain things in your mind. You don't know that you've never experienced what's coming down the pike. You don't know. You don't know what's coming up. You have no clue. It's never rained like that before. You've never seen this kind of judgment. So when you start, so when people start saying things like, it don't take all that. The question is, who are you? So when I tell people things like, you got to read the whole Bible, and then here comes some religious, man, you ain't got to know none of the whole, man, you ain't got to read the whole Bible, man. All you need to know is John 3, 6, 3, 9, 9, Oh, boy. No. They lied to you. It's not all you need to know. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. There's a verse. I'll get to that in, a, in another video. And then he says, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah shall a man live. So you got, a, you got a choice. Either you can believe everybody else telling you what you do need and don't need, or how about you try to learn every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. And when people say it don't take all that. So let's just say this. Um, man, I don't have my Bible out right now. But I, I believe he said you got to get gopher wood. Now, I'm not absolutely sure back in the day what that particular wood was. But he didn't just say go get wood. Any kind of wood. No matter. Just go get some wood. No. He made a specific kind of wood. Why? Because Yah knew that any kind of wood wasn't going to work. So whether it was like maybe just like a soft pine, it could have been, it could have been a crooked oak tree, it could have been, you know, you got palm trees, you got all kind of wood. He was like, no, nah, uh, uh, uh. go get the wood I'm telling you. Why? Because only Yah knows how long he's going to be in that boat even after the storm. So let's just say you have created the boat to withstand the 40 days and 40 nights, but did you know that you're going to be on that boat another year? Just floating around? Did you know that? No, you didn't know that. But Yah knew it. So therefore, he told you to pitch it, which means seal the, seal the gaps on the inside as well as the outside. That means like it would be sort of like a, in our mind today, it would be like a sealant or um, what do we use a lot of? Like silicone. It'd be like, you're gonna use like this, this silicone or you know, this plaster. Uh, but I need you to put it on the inside and the outside and the inside, inside and out. And you're thinking the whole time, man, it's been 900 football, two stories high. Why? Don't worry about all that. Do what I'll tell you. Now watch this. Imagine if the conversation would have went crooked. What if the conversation would have went, yeah, I hear what you're telling me to do, but 
I just can't see how it take all that. Since you yeah, can't you just automatically just make a big old boat or just take my little raggedy boat and, and make it float? Just let me make it any way I want. And then just by your grace, oh hallelujah, by your grace and mercy, just you put you put the I can hear these preachers. You put the Holy Ghost seal on the inside and you put the Holy Ghost seal on the outside and keep my boat floating. <laughs> He said, nah, Negro, I told you to pitch it. And then we tell him, pitch it. Why, well, in fact, y'all, why don't you just build it? I told you to build it. No, y'all, you build it. Woo, hallelujah. Ooh, he's out, y'all. I think you got it in the way. So what did he have to do? He couldn't argue. You can't sit around and argue with y'all about what you think is necessary or what you think is not necessary. That's so far above your pay grade, you have no idea. So this idea, when, so when people say things like, is it a matter of salvation? The answer is, yes, it is. It is a matter of salvation. What part? Every part. The kind of wood you get is a matter of salvation for your family. How it is nailed, how it is built, how it is pitched on the in and out, how big the window is in there for ventilation, how big the door is, all of that stuff, everything about it is a matter of salvation. So to ask, is it a matter of salvation is a dumb question. And I'm gonna close with this. There was some people, allegedly, because I don't really know the whole story. My son and Yaron are the ones who told me about it. Javon told me first. He said that there was a, uh, a group of billionaires, millionaires, rich folk, who wanted to uh, go down and see the, the Titanic. Pay money. I ain't gonna get into that right now. <laughs> they paid money, and you couldn't have paid a Negro. <laughs> you can't pay an Israelite to do that. <laughs> we ain't gonna. anyway. But watch. They. It came out later. Allegedly, I'm not sure. I don't know the whole story. Like I said, it came out after they went down in this, paid their money, and went down in this so-called submarine. That it it uh it imploded. It imploded and it killed them all. And they haven't found the bodies. Allegedly, again, I don't know. But it came out later that the uh, uh, the experts in ocean and shipbuilding and submarines and I, it's on top of my tongue I should have wrote it down before I, I did my video but you all know who I'm talking about the people who give the craft the thumbs up whether or not it's actually seaworthy it is on record I want you to think about this it's on record on record telling the man that it wasn't it wasn't worthy it wasn't structurally sound to handle that type of pressure that deep underwater and that the material that he was using would not sustain um, that amount of pressure that deep right and you know it is also on record that the man that built it refused to listen. Do you know why? Because in his mind, he kept asking the question, is this a matter of salvation? Is this a matter of salvation? <laughs> Every little thing, it might be little to you, you understand them all right. 
So obviously, it was. Now Zion, I'll be back with another video. We're gonna continue this thought. We're gonna help. We're gonna help the house of Israel. Hallelujah. And we're gonna keep trying to make it plain as we possibly can to wake up Jacob. Support the art. We appreciate. We appreciate all you do. And we pray.